So it's so great to have you here today uh, on this little workshop on healing emotional wounds, which is just such a an important and significant topic for me. And there are these two there are the, these two halves of the coin, um, which are one side is um, increasing your inner resources um, so that you have the inner resources to heal your emotional wounds. And um, that's one side of the coin. And the other side of the coin is bringing those inner resources to heal those um, emotional wounds. And uh, between those two principles, um, the, you know, the, the, the inner resources and um, healing your emotional wounds, that covers such a lot of the whole of personal development. Great to have you here, Om. Nice to see you. Um, Om is actually doing... Um, Tools for Personal Transformation, Lifetime at Level 1 in January as well. So uh, we seem to have a few of us here. So it's great. Um, so if we think about um, how you fulfill your potential in life, you know, a key aspect is really um, sort of multiplying, um, emphasizing, evoking uh, our inner resources. And then um, the second thing is to use that um, inner resources, not only to help us be the best that we can possibly be, but also to help us be resilient when times are difficult. And so it's the, the two sides of the same coin, which is that when we can be really empowered and aligned in ourselves, um, then we can handle the good times and we can handle the difficult times. And so today we're going to talk about how we apply those resources to the difficult times. Last week, we did quite a long meditation on all the different aspects of inner psychological resources. And I'll just, um, you know, recap that a little bit for you, for those of you who, you know, who don't know that material. But I think it's really, even for people who do know the material, I think it's really important to get what a broad range of potential inner resources they are. So we can start with um, your personal history. So, of course, the, the emotional moons we have tend to you know, come from our personal history, but so do many, many moments of resource, moments when we were in the flow, moments we were connected, moments we were relating well, moments when um, you know, we were being at our best. And every single one of those memories is an inner resource that we can evoke. So we can think about a time when um, life was going really well uh, for us we can see that we can hear the sound associated with it and we can feel the feeling uh, that's connected with it and then we can have that experience of um, our inner resources uh, Li Wei nice to have you here today Li Wei uh, I think you've got a new person translating for you so anyway that's good um, so so that's the first principle of inner resources the second principle of inner resources is that we all know people who believe in us, um, who care about us. And some of those people are, are friends who've been consistent over a period of time um, through a part of our lives. And sometimes, but sometimes there are people who just once looked us in the eye and said, I see you, I get you, or something, they transmitted something. I've got a particular school teacher who I hardly remember anything about him, but this one moment when he looked me in the eye and the feeling that he conveyed was that I could do something useful and helpful with my life. And so then we've got, you know, people from, from the past, um, people in the present in our lives. And um, sometimes people can be really creative and imagine people from the future of their lives who see them believe and believe in them. Then we've got people that we've never met who are inner resources for us. So for me, I've, I've mentioned this to you often, but Nelson Mandela, um, Gandhi, um, Martin Luther King, um, a number of different people who are very, um, the founder of Aikido, uh, Morohei Osensei, um, is an inner resource for me. But let me take Martin Luther King, uh, um, Nelson Mandela, because there's a particular quality of that for me, which I just want to mention to you. So when I need dogged persistence, when I need determination, when I need not giving up, I think of um, Nelson Mandela at his court case when he was in prison for 27 years. 
and for a lot of people that broke them and it you know perhaps it broke him for a while but he decided while he was in prison to make friends with the Africana prison guards and build those relationships and that was what contributed to him becoming someone who the Africana government could deal with so I just think that that level of dogged persistence and determination when I need that I call on him um, when I need um, um, flowing with an aggressive force, I call on the founder of Aikido. I, I studied Aikido for, for 15 years. Um, so th those are the qualities of different sorts of people that we can have in our inner resources. Um, I have Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. And if I want a particular feminine quality, um, I would have um, Galadriel because she's got this very sort of ethereal but all-seeing quality. Um, uh, so there are many, many different sorts of people. Mary Magdalene actually is one of mine because I've read a book about Mary Magdalene that really see, you know, she was the lead of all the disciples. I've got Yeshe Sogyal from Tibetan Buddhism. I've got all these different other people. Who are the people from storybooks? Who are the people from films that inspire you? How do you develop that quality of inner resource? And when you need to bring love to yourself, which is... Um, you know, one of the key, key is, is the key thing that we're going to do today. You know, who can you call on? Who can you draw on? And it's about developing that relationship, not only within a meditation, but also to develop that relationship over time. So I now have these different characters come to me in my dreams because I've um, seen, I've imagined them. I've heard their voice. I felt their touch. On so many occasions, I've evoked that on so many occasions that they now pop up in my dreams, which is, is super good, you know. So it's it's that level of practice of becoming familiar with those those resources, and of course, um, you can have be, you can have the storybook figures, you can have the figures from films, um, but you can also have archetypal fi figures, you know, the goddess. Um, you can have figures from different spiritual traditions whichever ones you choose and one of the one of wonderful things about the inner life is that there's no one who can tell you how to relate or not relate with those spiritual figures so you can I have a like I have a dinner party and I get figures around in my in imagination I have figures from lots of different spiritual traditions all drinking wine together sitting around the table I won't go into too much detail um so um you know you can do it any way that you like you can bring those figures into the room with you you know so it's like do you imagine some spiritual deity as being far away or do you imagine them as being close there's so many different things that we can do with with uh, the inner creativity of our lives and uh, and so that's a, um, a key part of the healing process and for me um it really depends because not everybody's sort of where I'm at with it you know 50 more than 50 percent of the people in Britain now um, are not are not don't identify with a religion I actually don't identify with a religion but I identify with an inner connection with some sort of sense of connection with the universe with you know what's the place between when there was nothing and then there was something in the universe and that transition that transition of infinite creativity of birthing into something in the universe that for me is sacred whatever that is um you can you know or the, the big bang if you think of the universe contracting um to a singularity and then bouncing back out again which is one of the theories you know the immensity and scale of the universe that for me is spiritual or just the the magnificent beauty of evolution and how it's developed here on on planet earth and when you look at the incredible creativity of those processes that for me is spiritual so it doesn't have to be with a through a tradition um but if you have a tradition you can always draw on it or you can steal from it you can steal the best of that tradition and i find that helpful because when i want to connect with something that's bigger than my own life that's one of the places i go so if we say that i I'm an individual self with my psychological resources and also my woundedness, but which I'm in the process of healing. 
I'm a part of a community of mind, which is the whole of humanity, all the ideas and thoughts, both positive and ne negative of the whole of that of humanity. And I can draw, I can draw on all the good stuff. And I can also draw on, perhaps I don't want to, but the bad stuff too. I can draw on the best of humanity, which often shows itself through the arts, through dance, through music, through culture. Um, you know, so I have that sense of being something larger than myself. Then I have mother nature, because, you know, I've never been separate from nature for a single moment. Every breath reminds me. Um, every drop of water reminds me. Every piece of food reminds me. You know, what, what else is my body other than the earth? You know, the bones is, is the ground. The, you know, the water in my body is, is, is the water of the earth. The air in my lungs is the air of the biosphere. I'm, I'm, I am nature. I, I'm both. You can think of it both of. I've never been separate from nature, but you could also say I am an a, an expression of nature. That's an incredible resource because also it goes beyond my own little individual life. I'm a part of this massive biosphere. It's bigger than me, so some of my little worries disappear when I start to pay attention to myself as mother nature and then of course you've got spirituality when you again you can the resource is that you're drawing on something ah oh, tiara you've got a resource there in your arms is that your your baby yeah great beautiful so you know the, the sort of beautiful process of connection with life and when you look in a small child's eyes there's a sort of a lack of ego in a baby's eyes that for me, a sort of openness and a, a pure awareness, lack of ego in a small baby that just from, takes me into that place of that vast openness that is beyond the constructed ego of my life. And so therefore I find the spiritual super helpful because if I think of myself as just my ego, then I live and then I die. If I think of myself as the ocean of existence, then I never die. So we've got we have all of these different levels of resources. And just to talk about love, which is a you know learning to love ourselves better and love to love all the different corners of ourselves better. Um, if you if it's possible for you to call on a very healing, loving power from the universe, that is super helpful. You know, nature loves me in a way that's so big that I can't I can't defend myself from that love. That's one way to say it. So those are just some uh, just a sort of summary of the whole topic of inner resources. Um, and then we apply those inner resources to our own, um, you know, to the places in ourselves that we we don't hold well. So. When we talk about emotional wounds, historical emotional wounds, our difficulty is very often that we don't hold those places well. We either haven't included them or we don't hold them close or we're not sweet with that person in ourselves, that place in ourselves, that part of ourselves. And, but, and also sometimes the wound itself is so painful that it's really hard to stay with that pain. And in, in the case of trauma, the feeling could be so overwhelming that we that we've naturally dissociated from it, and then of course you know the the, the modern trauma technique is is they call it titration. You just feel a little bit and you back away, and you feel a little bit more and you back away, and you just do it tiny tiny little tastes at a time, and but all of them all the different psychological methods are basically about. Um, coming home to yourself, bringing back into the fold the parts of you that have been wounded. There may be something else as well. So there's dealing with the, the feeling of woundedness. But there can also be the internal dialogue that, that what you say to yourself as a result of being wounded, because the, the great tragedy of being a child is that you totally believe in you know, and look up to and take on board everything your carers offer you. 
and that's all the good stuff and it's also all the terrible stuff so if you get negative messages from your carers or they're absent or they're not around or they don't see you or get you and um, whether those are verbal messages or just non-verbal messages my mother had a look that meant you know to me i don't love you and i once asked her you know mum you know mum do you love me and she just said of course i love you like that so we we get these negative view of ourselves um that gets internalized from um because we were not in an environment that held us in the way that a small baby needs to be held for at least you know i mean you can talk to lots of different people about the you know the process of being a baby and weaning but at least three months of really good quality attention is really really helpful um and you know in the olden days it might have been three years so that process of just being really held and seen well and then if we don't feel love we say well it must be something wrong with me i was unlovable in some way i wasn't good enough for my mother or my father and then you know that we uh, you know you all know the the negative internal dialogue patterns you have disempowering messages you have because you thought well if my dad wasn't there maybe i wasn't very interesting or maybe i wasn't good enough maybe i wasn't lovable or if my mum wasn't there then i definitely wasn't lovable or, you know and it's not it's not it, it's not just if if there if them being there was really interrupted not when you're very small what you need is you need almost an instant response you cry and you're fed or your nappy's changed or you're cuddled there's someone really pretty close by as you get a little bit older you still don't want to be to feel abandoned for a few hours i remember being in my cot nobody came you know in those days child rearing was you know you leave the children to cry leave the baby to cry you know and then you think well i'm not really lovable i'm not really worth anything i'm not really valued i don't have any safety in this world and then that then you you start to make messages about that and then of course guess what happens next not only do you make messages about that you start treating the world acting in the world as if it were true you know so then you start to slightly undermine yourself or to act out in situations where you know because you've been triggered in some way um uh, my partner has two young kids one of 13 and one of 11 and those kids need a lot of attention at the moment and when um sophie is giving them all of that attention it reminds me that i was the one who's given least attention in my family i mean it was weird what you know in my family my twin brother was really needy and a little bit ill. My sisters came along. I learned that to be completely self-sufficient was the best way to do it. So I, as a child, I learned not to meet my own needs. That was the best thing. And then when, of course, that happens as an adult, I get touched. It's like, oh, you know, I get touched in a way. And of course, that happens to all of us. You know, whatever your story is, it's so easy for that to get touched. And therefore, we need to, to bring healing to that and it's a, it's a very very beautiful question um any any questions on what i've said so far then i'm going to show one single slide and then i'm going to take us into a meditation any questions or comments on what i've said so far doesn't look like it Cool. Uh, well, if you just just un since it's a small group, just unmute if you find that um, you've got uh, a question. So the, the the basic structure, you know. So if you are just if you just intellectualize, um, so body mind state, or we could call this a coach state, or a generative state, or a creative mind state for, for people who've been you know i know some of your training um if you just talk to the head you're um you will only engage the head you, what you want to do is to engage the head the heart and the gut or you want to engage body and mind or body emotion mind and spirit you want to engage the whole person which is why 
mindfulness or meditation practice at the start of healing processes is so important because the whole of the person is being addressed. And then you might, you know, you have an intention, you know what it is that you want to heal. Or it may just be the intention in a meditation might just might be, let me listen to where I am today and bring attention and care to the part of me that needs attention today. Um, and then we bring, as I've said, psychological and spiritual resources, and both of those are really helpful um, if you can find a way of accessing it in a way that um, the spiritual resources, you know, sometimes people have such a block because of the tradition they were brought up in. Um, it can be difficult for some people to do that. But that's why I always include science and cosmology as a spiritual resource, because for me that, you know, you know, that is absolutely connects me to the to the greatest sphere of things and then you're building a relationship with yourself you engage the wounded part of yourself and um you start a, a conversation with the wounded part of yourself so what is in it what is it in me that needs attention right now and how do i start to bring my psychological resources my warm, tender heart, my loving self to that place in me that needs attention right now. And then, you know, what? how do I take this? At the end of that, you've re, you have develop this relationship with yourself. And then you say, well, you know, how, let me imagine taking this forward into the future. How do I take this for? Let me see myself with this better, improved, enhanced relationship with myself in the future. And then finally, um, really a strong recommendation, you know, from my work and also from um, particularly Steve Gilligan's work, uh, you know, my colleague Steve Gilligan, is that to have a daily practice where we reinforce whatever it is that we're growing in ourselves. It's, you know, it's not enough to go to a therapist and they do a bit of therapy work and then think that it's all sorted. You need to actually keep coming back to that place in yourself. Um, and so a daily practice of meditation is really helpful and it can be a, a psychological meditation and a spiritual one so you can start with you know getting body mind connection and then you can say you know how am i today what am i you know what's wounded what's my heart today what's my woundedness today what's my longing today how can i bring my resources to my longing today and then you know perhaps how can i reach out because i think there's always a trap among psychological people which is that you you try and sort it all for yourself so it's like who can i reach out to that will give me who will nourish me today um and to have that vulnerability of being able to reach out to friends um, and to have, you know, there's a whole conversation about having the right sort of friends, having people in our lives who we can just say, hey, I'm really hurting today. Can I just tell you about it without them trying to fix you? So, you know, we call it tribe, sangha. Um, and they may not be your family of origin. They may not be the people you went to university with. Um, you know, they may be, they may not be in your current friendship group if you have very non psychologically orientated people people who can just hold you with love without trying to fix you so so that's the first part of the meditation is holding yourself and ask you know asking yourself what commitment what do i need to do today to support myself to nourish myself and then the, then the, the more spiritual part can be um is can be finding a place and i'm i won't say a lot about this right now finding a place a space which is essentially awareness itself um finding a space that is bigger than your ego that is bigger than whether you're feeling good or bad um and, and you can find that through mindfulness or any of the the contemplative practices the the um mystical practices of all the different traditions a place where you've got a loving space that's luminous and awake that can hold difficult feelings and can hold good feelings that just holds you 
in which you know in which through which life passes through so it's like the sky the sky can have clouds it can have rain but the sky never changes and familiarity with that is really helpful because when you're having a bad day you just say well this is just passing through it's not all of me that's having a bad day there's a part of me so again the language is important when you as you become more familiar with the larger space of awareness then then you can just say oh it's a part of me that's been triggered or hurt or touched and then i can hold that part of me um so great so um any questions before i take us into a meditation on this topic um is there anyone here i mean i know actually um pretty much everyone i know including Li Wei, um um Xiaomi, have you have you done a meditation before tiara have you done psych psychological style meditation before not really <laughs> okay great that's good to know <laughs> how do i say your name Xiaomi. Xiaomi. Xiaomi, great Good. Call me Emily, actually. It's Sorry? easier. Emily, you can call me Emily. Emily, great, yeah. Emily. Chinese people Emily. often have English names just because English people or people English language people have, have such difficulty with the Chinese language, they're kind to us and they adopt European names. Emily. Um, Good morning. Great. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Tiara, do you have have you done these sorts of meditations before? Yes, I am. Um, I associate with uh, Zen Buddhism mostly, and so mostly just silent meditation. But right, um, have you done I, sort of guided med psychological guided meditations? Of course, with yeah. Great, fantastic, good. Great, well, that's good. My first, Yara, my first Buddhist teacher was a Chan Buddhist master. It was really a wonderful thing. I was eighteen at the time, and he was the real deal. So it was I was so lucky. Oh, yeah, fortunate. So, yeah. Um, so we're going to do a meditation and i always think the first step is to just notice how you are right now um, to feel the weight of your body um, to hear the sounds around you and to Just start noticing what's in your immediate experience. And each of us has a way of doing this. And for Emily, I'll just guide a little bit more. So feel, you know, feel your bones, you know, pressing into the chair. And also your feet on the floor or wherever your feet are connected to the earth. So even if you're in a house, through the floor, you can sense the, the earth. There's the, the feeling of gravity pulling you into the earth, connecting you to the earth. And it can be fun to just notice how, how your body is connected to the earth. For example, I'm sitting in a chair, my feet are connected to the floor, and I can feel how that works through my bones and my backside is on this chair and I can feel how that chair supports me and then I can feel how my spine supports me in relation to gravity And so then, then I can also pay attention to my skin. The skin is the largest organ of my body. If 
feeling the air temperature, feeling how the, your clothes touch your body. And I've just noticed through my breathing how as my lungs expand, how that touches my clothes. So my skin, it's almost rubbed against my clothes by my, by opening my lungs, by as I open, as I fill my lungs. So what we're looking for, what we're exploring is paying attention to parts of our experience that we normally don't really notice as a way of broadening our awareness. So for me, it's interesting now to notice how the feeling of my clothes on my body changes with the in-breath and the out-breath. So I've got the feeling of, I mentioned bones. I've got skin. Notice some big muscles. I don't know enough biology to really tell whether it's my bones I'm feeling or if it's my muscles that are giving shape to my bones. So I can pay attention to the muscles of the thighs, the backside, even though the spine is relatively straight. It's the muscles that support the spine. Then with my in-breath, I can notice how the air presses down into my belly. And then I can become aware of the organs in my belly. There's so much sensation in the belly. Behind the navel, above the navel, below the navel, down into your sex. And then also the pelvic floor, all those complicated muscles. And then on top of all of that, the rising and falling of breath, of lungs, of rib cage. And it's great to include sound. I like to listen outside the window. If it, even if you can't hear anything, you're listening outside the window, outside the room. Then you can listen in the house for sounds in the house. Then you can listen for sounds in your room. There's a little echo in my room.
then I can listen for sounds in my body. Breathing is the easiest one. If it's very quiet, you can hear your heartbeat. Do you have ringing in your ears? And then listening to your inner voice from a distance. Like you're listening to someone at a party who's talking. You don't have to stop that voice. You're just curious. You don't have to believe that voice. Given that you can hear so much more, and that voice is only one part of your experience, you're more than that voice. It's just a voice. Perhaps there are images in your mind's eye. And if your eyes are closed, you can see darkness on your eyelids. And perhaps colours as well. And we can ask ourselves the question. Ask your belly the question, your heart the question, your throat the question. Particularly your belly and your heart. How are you today? Or how am I today? But you're not asking your head, you're asking your heart in your belly. And you can listen, you may get words, or you may just get a feeling, notice a feeling. And you don't have to change it. All you do at this point is welcome it. You just say, welcome. I welcome you. You've come for healing. You've come for attention. You've come to be known. You've come to be blessed. So then you can ask yourself, I wonder what this part of me needs today. What do I need today? What does this part of me need today? And so then you can say, who do I know who could meet this need in my inner world from past or present? Or is there some archetypal figure from a storybook or a film or a spiritual figure that could meet this need? For example, who is someone who really loves me? What do they look like.
hear their voice, feel the feeling from that person. Remember a time when they were really expressing that, even if it was only for a moment. And it could be a friend, but it could be a teacher or a therapist. A moment when you really felt held by them. So you might see them, you might hear a tone of voice, you might just feel a transmission from them, a feeling from them. Just take that in. You might find that there's one figure or you might find that more than one figure comes. You might be surprised by a figure coming from years ago, or someone unexpected. And if they're if you're someone who's wired, who's got negative or disempowering beliefs that there's nobody be, ever been around who loves you, has loved you, if a figure doesn't come, pick some archetype of love. Yeshe Sogyal or Tara from Buddhism. Mary Magdalene or Jesus from Christianity, Avalokiteshvara. The romantic poetry of Rumi or any other place where there's some archetypal figure of love. Mother Nature, who's fed you every day of your life the great mother. And as you feel that, notice how your heart opens. It doesn't have to be like a lovey-dovey sort of love. It could be someone who just saw you and said yes to you. Who believed in you. It's another sort of love. I personally like to bring a lot in. So I have lots of people. But if you're new to this, one is enough. Or you could just pick a moment in your life when you just really felt loved by, by life. It could be just in nature, loved by life. Or it could be a time when a friend was really connected and saw you. All we're trying to do is evoke in our body the memory of being loved. The love memories. And then think of somebody that you care about where it's not complicated, where it's simple. Very often I say somebody else's child or a friend or a client, or even just imagine that you're going into a school playground and a kid falls over and scratches their knee and they're crying. You don't even know who the kid is, but you, your heart opens. Or it could be a pet, 
a pet that you've loved. So just see here and feel your love for someone or something. And then with this feeling of love for someone or something, with this feeling in your heart of love, direct this love to any corner of yourself that needs attention, that needs care. that needs to be seen. Maybe it just needs to be witnessed. You know, it could be an emotionally needy place that needs nourishment. Or it could be an angry place that just needs to be witnessed. You say, yes, this is something to be angry about. Or a frightened place. Yes, you're frightened. Or a closed place or a disconnected place. Just a place that needs to be witnessed. We're not trying to change anything. We're just witnessing with love. You can say you're not a problem to be solved. You're a mystery that's unfolding. And so you begin to just interact with that part of yourself. What does that part of you need? Is it conversation? Is it reassurance? Or is it just the beam of love? Like holding the baby you and saying, yes, you're so cute, you're so sweet. Is it just that it needs hugs? Sometimes that place needs conversation. Sometimes a, a younger part of us needs us to say, hey, it's not that you're not lovable. It's just that your parents were screwed up or busy or they, the problem was them, not you. You are pure and innocent in yourself. Every child is born innocent, including you, and we get scarred by life. To so go back to the child and say, you are sweet, you are beautiful, you are talented, you are lovable. That's how you were born. And I, the adult me, the adult Zarko, Genrico, Angela, Li Wei, Xiaomi, Tiara, Om, I will bring this love and attention to you. The only person who can really parent us again, be the best mother and father for us again, is ourselves. The adult self that's willing to open our heart and just say, yes, I'm here now. I'm bringing you attention. 
whether you're frightened or just emotionally needy, longing for connection or angry, you can say yes to it all. To hold it and say, yes, I see you, I get you. And sometimes in this process, the adult you with the warm, tender heart, the wise adult mind and the warm, tender heart, says, oh, I need some extra resource here. Who can I call on? Some great cosmic force. Some great saint, some Buddha. The unborn mind. Just bringing sweetness and patience. If we've, if this is a place in you that you've tried to change, this place in you may resist. You just need to say, I accept you, I accept you, I accept you. Like, just to be patient, 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 patient. Just present presence and loving witness without any desire to change is a healing force so just be there present sometimes you need to explain to the child in you you know grown up so messed up your parents were messed up you didn't get your needs met it's really, really sad, and I'm really angry about it. But I'm now going to be with you, come to you. I'm going to be the best parent you ever got. And I need to practice because I don't always do it well. I'm not always there enough for you. For myself, I'm not always there enough for myself. I'm not always there enough for you takes practice. It may be the case that you have been, you have abandoned yourself on occasion. And now you're making up for that. So hopefully you're getting a sense of this really beautiful relationship that's developing between you and this part in you. It's a physical location in yourself, physical place in your body. Just imagine if you kept coming back to this place and holding this place well and being kind to this place during the course of the days and weeks that come. Just imagine that you had a daily rendezvous with this place in yourself, a checking in with yourself, a connecting, like a psychological meditation. It could be five minutes only. A 
if you're someone who has a spiritual meditation practice, it could be the first five minutes of that or the last five minutes to check in with yourself emotionally. Just imagine yourself holding this place in yourself during the days and weeks that come. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is just to go into groups. One group of three and one group of four. Um, in the group of three, you have five minutes per person. And um, I'd like you to do your own timing. In the group of four, I will do the timing. And you've got... It's going to be 16 minutes, four minutes per person, just to share. How was that meditation from you? What did you get from that? So the groups start now. I will do the timing. So one person talks, the other two, the other two or three listen. And um, in the group of four, both Li Wei and Xiaomi both get a chance in the exercise. You get to talk for uh, five minutes per person in the group of three, four minutes per person in the uh, group of four. And I will do the timing for the group of four. One person talks, how was that meditation for me? What did I get from that? And uh, the group of three do their own timing. The group starts now. Great to have you all back. Um, so let's start, Angela, just a few words from everybody. Um, um, what did you get from the meditation? Just a sentence or two. Um, let's say for the first time, a clear inner connection to, um, let's say, I realized really, um, I think for the first time clearly that I have uh, an image about love, which is still very linked to a child childish image so this uh, when you say absolute love or whatever all this uh, but this time for the first time i connected to la madonna maria Maddalena, as an archetype of love so really like a mother holding the child so i could imagine myself holding myself <laughs> as a baby <laughs> through that target so it was really cute and um and then I added some friends and stuff. But that one was the connection that I felt the most. Um, Beautiful. And Thank I connected you. to a statue of the Madonna. There are many. Anyway, the one that I saw this year in uh, Chartres. Beautiful. A, Madonna, a blue Madonna, a black Madonna, actually. Yeah. Uh, black Madonna with a blue dress. So it was very nice. I liked it. Beautiful. Beautiful, Angela. Pass it on to someone. Yes. Uh, um, Om. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, what did you get from the meditation? I, yeah, I, I went into a trance. And the inference I made was that as you started talking, I started relaxing, and then I went into a trance. And the inference I made this time is that. I go into trance so that uh, I don't think of the future. My celebration stops a bit, you know, and conscious thinking stops, and I simply go into trance. But the moment you stopped and this, the session was over, immediately I understood that I put the, my video on, light on. So it was not a sleep that I went into, it was a trance. Yeah, great. Is that what you got from it? Was that did you learn yeah, anything yeah. new? Yeah, yeah. I should I should enjoy and practice meditation properly. That right. is what I got. Right. And being absolutely in the moment. Being in the moment, yeah. Absolutely in the moment. Not even thinking of what after these five minutes or things like that. 
or even trying to learn anything. You just just be. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sarko. Okay. Sarko. What did you get from the meditation? Yeah, I, I was kind of reminded on the things uh, and reminded and reminded through it that I should, or, uh, the things which I should work on. And that's basically to how do I establish thinking and thinking how to establish triggers, anchors, so that I can be able to do what you are reminding us we have to be doing. Because I don't have a problem with remembering and establishing positive feelings. It's to remind myself that I should be doing that, which I don't. Mm -hmm. So this anchor trigger, what, what in, how can I do it so that when I kind of get in my daily life from one thing to another, as I said, eating and sleeping and answering questions and cooking food and so on, how can I, and, and then get- Set an alarm on, on your phone for every 30 minutes. <laughs> Tell it again. Set an alarm on your phone. Thank you. For every 30 minutes. Thank you, fine. Well, once you can start with once an hour and then when you become advanced, make it every 30 minutes. Thank you. That's good. Yeah. Perfect. Something like Thank that, you. Yeah. <laughs> And making habits is great. Um, th there's a great book on habits called um, Atomic Habits. Right. And th the secret the secret of habits is that it's not how long you do the habit for, but that you but that you do it often, regularly. So you could make a two minute habit to stop and connect with yourself. But anyway, it's a great book if you if you want to read that. But it's great. Create a habit. So you want to create a habit around it. What's the trigger for the habit? Um, Creating a trigger for that habit. That's great. Pass it on to someone, Zarko. Okay. Uh, Tiara. <clears throat> um, yeah, so I think the thing that I most, maybe the thing that is thought-provoking for me about my experience is that I have considered um, this younger version of myself when I was about 10, when my parents got divorced. And I've done a little bit of work in therapy around that uh, before, and also done this exercise in my mind where I'm present with, uh, with, that, with that younger part of myself and, uh, and, and maybe comforting her or telling her something that I think she needs to hear. And yet, it's still so, um, it still feels the same to me. I can still go back into that part of myself and I can still, you know, tears will still stream down my face. And I, so I guess I wonder, my thought is, is uh, if that ever changes or if it just, you just develop a relationship with it. And how long, have you, how many times have you gone back to her? I don't know, not so many, maybe 10. 10 times yeah, that's a lot so you just so she still feels such sadness doesn't she yeah, yeah she still feels such sadness yeah and it's sort of just being really patient with that really 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 patient holding her and then the question is can you develop the adult you develop a relationship with her which is that holds her more that holds her more strongly than that time when that holds her more strongly than that time when they divorced. Yeah, actually, what happened this time was that I I listened to what you said about uh, calling on someone else, and uh, and I brought a as my favorite spiritual teacher who was Ramdas into mm. the uh, room, and that was helpful actually. I've never done something like that before, so maybe that's a new uh, yeah. resource for yeah. me. In some ways, you know, you have to sort of build a 
a relationship with her, that place in you that that holds her so well that even that the grief isn't so strong anymore. But it's but you can't just tell her not to have the grief. You've just got to you've got to become so good at holding her in that. Mm-hmm. And baby Ramdas is really helpful, you know. Um you know, from your Zen practice, um, you know, everything arises in awareness, including those feelings. You, you don't have to identify with those feelings, but you can be there with a loving heart holding holding her. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And sometimes yeah. The, the kid doesn't trust. You know, the kid may not trust you until you've really done it a lot, you know, so... Yeah. Yeah. And you know what grief is like. Grief, some people for it's quick, some people it's long, sometimes it's a good day, sometimes it's a bad day. You can't predict the, how grief moves. All you can do is really stay close with the process of grief. Yeah. Uh, is she here now? Can you feel her now? Yeah. Great. So she's welcome. Yeah. How is she feeling right this moment? Still sad. Still sad, yeah. So her sadness is welcome. Yeah. You know, one of the things that's so important is that even though we teach people to um to hold their own in a resource, to hold that place in themselves, actually we also need to have that held on the outside when it's particularly painful or difficult it's mm. you know we're, we're relationship creatures you know we're mammals and so therefore you know to have someone else say yes i see her i hear her I feel her is really 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 helpful so i just want her to know that that i'm witnessing her and i'm saying yes to her grief and i'm praying that she finds comfort in her relationship with you and that healing happens. Yeah. And that, uh, yeah. And that she missed her. Which parent left? Well, they just separated. So. But, and did you live with one or, or the other? There was a uh, separation. We had a, we, we lived with my uh, father on the weekends and one day a week and my mother for the rest of the time. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I can feel that now. Yeah. It's so, one of the things in life is, on the one hand, life teaches us to be tough. But really, actually, we're vulnerable and soft and you know, squidgy even. You know, it's like we really are, that's our nature. But we have to, we toughen up around life. But some, at least some of the time, we have to, to just remember that when, you know, yeah, we can do tough when we have to, but actually we're just vulnerable, we're soft, we need love, we need comfort, and to really be okay with that place in yourself. You know, the place in you that that loves and wants love and has longing is a very, really beautiful place. Uh, that it's, it's what makes us human. Uh, so to be very respectful and um, caring about that place in you, because it's what what makes us beautiful human beings. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Pass it. Pass it on to someone else. Um. Okay. Oh gosh, Emily. Emily, great. Right. How was the exercise for you, Emily? Hi. Um. I. I think it brings me calmness and awareness. Mm. I really like the concept of yours, the younger, the child, the child version of you and the adulthood of you. Yeah, yeah it, it reminds me a lot. Like, mm, I think some of my some of my problems are originally from the child childhood of me and i yeah. didn't realize it before yeah you didn't feel that before show, uh, um, show me um bring your chair closer to the camera 
Uh, yeah. uh, okay. Is this better? That's better because because you yeah that's great. So okay. some of your that's really helpful. Um, so some you've realized today that that um, that some of your hurt wounds comes from the child in you. Yeah. And how was it being with her? Mm. I'm sorry. Can you repeat? That? How was it being with the child in you? Mm. I I don't know. <laughs> how did it feel being with the child? Mm. I can feel. It's not a very good feeling, I yeah. guess. Yeah. yeah. It's a difficult feeling. Yeah. It's very com complicated. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you have to... So the first step is to just admit to that. Yeah. To know that. To know that. And then yeah. to keep bringing really, love. Go on. It's very good to realize it. Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. That's great. The sad part of you is really welcome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pass it, let's pass it to Li Hui. How was the meditation for you, Li Hui? Okay, Li Hui. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 因为让我连接到了, so Li Hui says, hearing your voice, hearing Julian's voice makes her feel connected. <laughs> yeah, your meditation makes her bring brings her attention to the moment. Mm -hmm. 就还有你给我的陪伴，我就觉得，呃，在冥想的过程中，我也想到了我在中国的朋友，对，在这里来也有时候有些挑战。Yeah, and she thinks, uh, me, accompanying her to do the medication is also a very big support for her. Yeah, but forget forgetting me for a moment, forgetting you accompanying her. What was the relationship inside her like? Um, so Tasha老师说，嗯，你的内心感受到了你的connection。呃，我感觉到了温暖。你就说，在他之前说到的，当你受伤的时候，你要意识到，然后找一个朋友。我觉得这就像是给我一个提醒一样的，就是让我不要自
just having that human contact. One of the things that I think, you know, the zoo, um, after COVID, um, one of the, the the problems is that we've become adapted to spending lots of time on Zoom. And Zoom is great in a way, um, but but being able to have the face-to-face -face contact um, with each other is just so important. You know, so Zoom is a substitute, but it's not the same as sitting in the room with someone. Um, and when you're far away from your family, as you are Li Hui and Xiaomi, um, it can just be difficult. And we just need to recognize that. I'm really encouraging everybody at the moment to think about what was great about the world before COVID, before Zoom. And then how do I get into the room with people? How do I get into the room with people who hear me um, and who can feel me? There's something extra that happens when we're in the room with people. Um, even though we can create quite intimate environments online, um so yeah so important reaching out you know I, there's a statement i love which is from um i've forgotten his name now but um science fiction writer it'll come back to me which is you know we're all here to get through this we're all here to help each other get through this and then he says whatever this is you know but it's that we're all here to help each other get through this and it's that um human connection one thing that has really touched me and i might go back to it was i was doing volunteer work in a hospital um as a part of the chaplaincy the, uh, the counseling team we'd go to people and we'd say you know we're here for uh, religious people and non-religious people too we're here to just you know to hear your story because in hospitals they give you counseling if you have psychological problems but they don't listen to you if you if your life has been completely changed by your illness and so i would just go and talk to people and sometimes it was terrible because i'd sit and talk to somebody and hold their hand and there would be no positive health outcome there, you know the, the future there was nothing good in terms of their health in the future there was no um good future but just having someone listen and hold their hand and tell their story about their past or their present or their future was very very powerful for people and, and i used to leave feeling quite a you know quite a lot of bliss because something happened just in the listening that didn't change the circumstances of the person's life but changed how they felt about in that moment about it so so important Gianrica, how was the meditation for you very good very um very uh it calm it calms me it calms me down and um i didn't i didn't saw um, a specific part i i just saw light this light and uh shining on some shadow parts of me i i couldn't recognize which shadow parts of me but i i saw this this light and I was um, open to this to these parts which was on in the in the dark, you know, and uh, was very very deep, very very deep, and also very in a way deep, very light, and very quiet. It's interesting yeah. this combination. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, interesting combination. To calm down, to calm down, to yeah, this this kind of work with you, it's very precious. I think it's it's uh, yeah. I didn't make it now for several months, two months. I miss here the group, so it was a quite quite good decision to to have this time to make it here with, yeah. with you all. Yeah, and the next year we'll get lots of time, so that will be great. Um, so anybody um, got anything that you want to ask me about your own process or the process of healing any questions that you have not not it's less interesting to have abstract questions you know about what a person like this but more a question about you or something more personal about your own healing journey any any questions 
Yeah, Angela. Um, as I am currently in Italy, in Sicily, where there is my mother, I really came with all the best intention of the world, and it's only one week. And nevertheless, uh, uh, for me, what is really difficult is uh, on one side uh, to welcome uh, the difficult feelings that rise uh, up uh, as soon as I am with my mother. Yeah. And I have the impression, okay, I, I'm more aware of them. So I notice it really while I'm, it's there. And this needs to say, I, I need to go back again and nevertheless to consult with the practical stuff that uh, are to be done now, which I find it pretty difficult to uh... sorry just I missed a bit of that so the need to go you mean to leave yes not to come not to come again. not to come again not... for I don't know how many months yeah so. And then also the part of you that wants to deal with the practical side. But then you. there are the practical stuff and it's not right either to leave uh, everything on my brother. So it's really like, let's say, if we don't want to make the question so personal, it's really how to take care of those inner parts uh, and then be able to deal with uh, whatever is uh, objectively there to deal with. Yeah. It's really, uh, you know, there's a conflict there. The conflict is, uh, you know, for your own sort of inner well-being, you know, you better not to be there, partly because perhaps your brother doesn't take as much responsibility as he could, but also because your mother's difficult. Um, your relationship with your mother's difficult. Um, and yet there's also something really beautiful about the adult Angela, um, who is despite all of that diff that historical difficulty with your mother um you know and how she how she can be difficult in the present um and how she can trigger you and all the rest that you actually want to do the best by her and i think that's something really to appreciate yourself for you know that you're you're doing something that's really difficult for you um and to be very very kind and sweet with yourself it's very you know, difficult and triggering for you. Um, and just to be so appreciative of yourself. So I think there's something about, you know, you're going to do what you're going to do, but you also need to really give loving attention to the child in you so that, that you know, that she's taken care of really well by you, by the adult you, you know, the mm -hmm. woman with all of these great resources in the world that she's taken really really well care of you while you know you've got two kids now haven't you you've got the kid in you and you've got your mother um and that is difficult so i don't know if there's much to be done other than for you to really make sure that you do the self-nourishment part as well you know i don't know if that's helpful yeah, because you, uh, there are stuff who cannot be changed. Uh, so it's just a reminder of that. What do you mean, like with your mum? Let's say that probably, which you just said, it reminded me that the issue probably is not my mother, it's not even the little one, but it's this uh, like kind of uh, double bind that whatever I do, finally it's wrong. Because in a way, I'm not able to really to take care of the little one without getting triggered when I'm in with my mother. I'm not able to take care of my mother without being triggered and therefore going on. So the feeling is, uh, because I'm used to that, uh, that finally whatever I do, it's wronger because it doesn't work. Yeah. And probably I just, I just uh, uh, it's a kind of saying what you say that I appreciate actually the effort uh, independent of the result. Uh, yes, yeah. Um, just when Angela says the little one, she means the child in herself. Um, and then, you know, she, double bind, double bind is, so it's like, it's when whatever you do, it's wrong, you know, and, and that's very often right at the core of our psychological you know what's going on for a psychology whatever i do is going to be wrong if i just look after myself that's wrong if i just look after my mother that's wrong whatever i do for my mother it's wrong 
you know that's you know angela comes to to sicily to take care of her mother but whatever she does is wrong anyway but if she didn't come to sicily to take care of her mother it would be wrong too so whatever she does and i think so so one thing that you can do which you which you are doing which is just actually hold that there's a double bind and that you can't escape from it you know there isn't a way out so you just have to hold that and then you hold that you know that there isn't a way out of this it's going to be uncomfortable yet you're you're doing this out it's an you know it's an act of love that you're doing um it's an act of love that you're doing for your mother who did bring you into the world one day she will die um you know it may not feel good but you're doing something quite beautiful actually um because you could just put your finger up and say i'm off so and from time to time i think the never dress maybe would be the best decision this is their the yeah. yes one side of the other side yeah yeah and so that's uh, holding both you know holding both is is a, a very mature and wise thing and holding the discomfort in both you know can you find a place in yourself that can hold the discomfort that neither works perfectly for you. you know, finding that place that holds both. Um, and I appreciate the fair effort. What you said before, I think it's really probably the, I appreciate the effort I'm doing and not to like to look right. at that form of how it, uh, it yeah. expresses itself. Sometimes I just think, has, you know, I sort of think of, sometimes one has to, to, to do something that's really difficult. And one of the things, well, the things that I do when I'm doing that is, you know, because by and large, my life is lucky, you know, I sort of think, so I can practice doing this thing that I'm finding really difficult in the knowledge that it's training me in case anything really difficult comes along, you know. So I sort of see this as a practice in itself for myself when I'm dealing with something difficult, that I will hold myself in this. I will hold the two sides neither is comfortable doing this isn't comfortable but i will hold this with i will have love for myself doing this um i will hold myself in love as i do this even though it's not comfortable even though neither feels right yeah so so a a angela i want to i mean again from the outside just you know for us to offer you our blessing of you know you're doing something that's really difficult for you personally for the child in you and you're doing something that's unrewarding with your mother because your mother's an un quite unrewarding and you're doing something because you feel it's the right thing to do and we can we can hold we we can hold that you know we can say yes to you holding that difficulty we can see how that's difficult so yeah and without trying to change it just saying this is difficult this is difficult yeah so it's sort of you know it's sort of kudos to you you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. Done exactly look so, yeah yeah great yeah so I just want as everybody to be aware of the field, the feeling in the group. So, you know, we came as individuals and then, you know, I did some evoking. But right now, right just then, particularly just then that moment, you know, in responding to Angela, could you feel the whole group? I mean, that's such a beautiful thing, isn't it? And we've got ourselves as individuals, we've got how we relate one-on-one -on -one and we've got the feel and isn't it incredible that even on zoom we can get this feeling and we didn't really know each other before this so so that so that this the group itself is a healing force because we are creatures who live in tribes who live in herds you know where so it's yeah just to feel that presence yeah so um yeah so beautiful so 
what would be a word or a phrase or a blessing something that you what is it that you would like each member of this group to take away with them today and we'll start with angela um the sensation that i had a really like i think a blessing is a warmth uh, openness in the heart warmth openness in the heart yeah pass it to someone uh tiara hmm. also something i felt in the meditation no warmth and openness M mine was also liquid uh, a sort of a liquid feeling in my heart. Hmm. Just everybody, just feel the liquid feeling in your heart. As each person speaks, just say, oh, what does that feel like? Yeah. Pass it to someone, Tiara. Um, Zarko? Hmm. Uh, mute. Unmute. Yeah, I, I, I have very I know, difficult feeling in express myself what you, you, Julian does every time to chat in one word. It seems to me kind of I'm being pushed, squeezed. What's a to, blessing you want to offer to the group, to the people in this group? Zarko. I don't want to put any blessing. I think that it was the richness of experience which we have. Then you try to push me into one word. I cannot do that. Okay, great. <laughs> what would you do with 10 words? Oh. The Give a blessing words, in 10 I, words. I, I, I told you it was the richness of experience. Great. <laughs> Good. I told it anyway. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Pass it to someone. Good, uh, Enrico. Yeah. Thank you, Zarko. Yeah. Um, I wish that this uh, feeling, this fluid feeling, which I interpret as a kind of love. You know, Angela told about this different kind of image about love. Maybe this uh, more universal law, this fluid mm. feeling remain present mm. in us in a, in, in a abstract way. But fluid was good <laughs> from, from Tiara and this different kind of laws like Angela told. Uh, it's cool, right. it's pretty cool. If it's, right. if it's stay uh, in, uh, in uh, every single of us and also in this group, which now is, uh, uh, we are not done anymore, yeah. Pass it to someone. I pass it to one. I offer fortitude and res resilience. Okay. Fortitude and resilience for Pass it to someone on. Who's left? Emily. Okay. So what's your blessing to the group, Emily? What words of support do you offer to the group? Um, I want to say to everyone that um, um, we are all here to hear each other, listen to each other and support right beautiful pass it to Li Hui Li Hui I think that this class I think that this class is very beautiful and very open Hey Yi She thinks um, this class this session of the medication is a very good connection to her, connect her to each of us. Right. Hey, she is very thankful. Right. I'm thankful too. I'm 
I have a warm, fluid, <laughs> open heart. Spacious, actually. Spacious heart. Uh, okay. Feels really great, this connection, how quickly we've done this. Lovely to see you all. Yeah. Next yeah. week, we're doing a love meditation for Christmas. Um, so I hope to see you there. Wow. Thank you. Thank you.